Welcome to In the Know with the Bullionist. I'm Dawn Marie, a 7K Metal Silver Associate and Top Recruiter, and today's date is Saturday, September 28, 2019. I am so excited for our next segment. It's going to be a great one. I'm here with the fabulous AG Leveraged. Welcome to the show, AG. Hi there, Dawn. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm excited to talk about our topic, which is, is cheap money good? So, AG, let's get right to it. So why is cheap money in the form of low interest rates to publicly traded companies a bad idea, in your opinion? So since 2009, as the interest rates have gone down, Corporations, publicly traded companies, Tesla, AT&T, General Electric, General Motors, all corporations have had access to very cheap money. So they've gone forward with these loans, and for the most part what they've done is they've bought back their stocks. So have they invested in new machinery, in new technology, in the training of employees, in the purchasing of, of inventory? For the most part, not. They have not. The way that the stock market in the recency, well, in the last 10 years, has been shouldered, the reason that our stock market has done so well is because these very cheap loans to these corporations have allowed them to, rather than investing in their, in their growth from a capitalist perspective, they've instead bought back their, their own stocks to keep those stock prices elevated and climb further still. So what that does is it creates what is now being called a zombie company. Recently, I had a friend who, who said to me how well his stock portfolio was doing. And it wasn't until we analyzed the companies that his stock is invested in that, that he started looking at it again, saying, I, I didn't know that these companies were so over-leveraged and so indebted and so in the red. And suddenly he himself said, my God, if these companies do, do not have access to these low interest loans, they're going to go belly up. And then he understood and came back and said to me, unless the interest rates go lower, they're not even going to be able to make their interest rate. No wonder governments, corporations, and the bond market are all going in the direction. Of, remember, all the countries are going in the direction of, of – uh, zero interest rates to negative interest rates. It's so that they have to pay lesser on interest rates on their massive loans they have, and eventually when they go negative, they can pretty much write off that debt. But then the question begs, what happens to the money, to the fiat paper money in that country? And we've talked about this before. We've talked about what happened, uh, what's happening to Argentina with the peso. We've talked about what's hap what happened in Venezuela. we talked about what's happening throughout the European Union. The more paper that's printed, the more that's out there, the lesser the purchasing power. And if you don't mind, Don, I'm going to keep going on this because I'm on a rant. Yeah, go right ahead. So um, the same friend went ahead and said, well, but that's all consistent with older American companies. Right now, you know, we're in a new world. We're in the world of Uber and Dash and Tesla and Lyft and WeWork and so forth. And I said, well, why don't we, why don't we open up those companies as well? And from Grubhub to DoorDash to Uber to Lyft, these are all over a billion dollar companies. And if we look at them, unless they're, if we look at their ledger, if we look at their accounting, Unless they're subsidized with government money, unless they have cheap money through the form of, of cheap loans, unless the interest rates remain low, these companies cannot exist because they already exist in the red. They're already existing in the negative. So I've, I've mentioned to you before that I'm a builder by trade. If I ran my company in the red, where every single year I'm losing, I'd go bankrupt. I would close my doors. The way that I work is I go out, I do a project, God willing, everything turns out as planned, there's a profit, and with that profit, I spend more on materials, on labor, on equipment, on more employees, on advertising, marketing, overhead, perhaps I improve the existing general liability 
and workers' compensation insurances. Perhaps I, I, I cast a wider net of, of, of uh, publicity. So the money is reinvested back into the company so the company could grow bigger and stronger so that it then profits further and so forth. That is a traditional way of doing business. That is a capitalist way of doing business. This new way of doing business, and that's why it's called zombie, is there are companies that are, that are in the red that are not making any money and yet they continue to exist on cheap government loans. And, and Don, I'm going to go into something else here. Let's take Netflix for an example. Netflix is something that we all right now have. 99% uh, of people no longer watch standard television, much less news, and, and beyond YouTube and, and our computers, people watch Netflix. And so Netflix started off as a company that would mail you a, a movie, and when you're done watching it, you mail it back, and you get another movie in return. And that was a for-profit company once upon a time. Then Netflix went on to having their streaming on 24-7. And that now translated into Netflix creating and producing content. They're now creating their own movies. Now, we're not talking about movies made on a handheld projector. We're talking multi-million dollar movies and, and maybe even billion dollar movies because some of the A actors that they're getting, A-list actors, these are very big names. Now, how is it that Netflix can produce those movies and yet there's not a single ad? How can they make those movies and yet there's no revenue being created beyond the membership to Netflix? And if we add up all the membership fees to Netflix, it doesn't equate what they're spending in the production of these high-end movies that they're coming out with constantly. And so then we start looking at, well, who's investing in the creation of these movies at a loss? Because all the money is being loaned out to Netflix. And so it's not a for-profit idea anymore. The idea is now, how heavily indebted can we get? And that appears to be the new mindset of all of these companies. They're all functioning in the red, and they're comfortable getting more and more in debt as we, as we move forward. Now let, me, let, now, let me come to a – actually, Don, do you, if you have another question, come on in. Otherwise, I've got another thought. You know, I think that you've answered a lot of the questions I had, so go right ahead. So someone will say, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with being in debt? This is the American way. We all carry between thirty to sixty thousand dollars in debt on credit. We all have several hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt with our vehicles and our home and, and whatever else we may own. What is wrong with that? Why should that make me uncomfortable? And so I'll take an example of another friend, a younger friend, who said to me, Why shouldn't I want my college loan removed altogether? Why shouldn't I why should I be against the government? taking over my college debt. And what I said to this person was, well, let's pretend that college loans and college debts were slashed completely across the country. And let's pretend that that required approximately 10% more actual physical money to go ahead and clear out that, those debts to zero. So that 10% of influx of money into our system would mean that our dollar, our physical dollar that we're out there purchasing with, would lose 10% in buying power because it's an actual relationship between the two. The more physical money that's introduced into the economy by way of social programs or debt reduction creates inflation on the other side. It's a direct connection and, and relationship between the both. It's an inverse relationship. So... Does that make sense, Don? Absolutely. Great. And so that, that is why we cannot celebrate debt reduction. We cannot – right now there, there are people who are saying, let's, uh, let's, not, let's not pay out some of these uh, – whether it's on the one side we have Social Security, pensions, we have deferred comps. We have 401ks. These are folks who have, lived a, who have worked a lifetime, and they deserve the monies that they've been promised. And now on the other side, we have unemployment. We have disability. We have welfare. We have, 
we have these other promised uh, monies as well. To remove any one of those programs would hurt the economy at large because our pensions and our retirements are, are based on some of these debts, on some of these debt programs, these debt vehicles. So even, even the, the college debt itself belongs in a portfolio of a retirement fund. It belongs to an institution. So to reduce that, to, to just wipe away that, 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 uh, that college debt, to forgive it or to just remove it altogether would mean that a lot of retirees would suffer enormously because of it because there is that relationship between the two. So we can't do that either, can we? No, we can't. <laughs> well, awesome. And what would your tip of the day be to finish out this wonderful segment? The tip of the day is live within your means. Tip of the day is get out there and build yourself, build your skill sets, uh, learn things. Um, this whole um, this paradigm of creating cheap cash is something that's going to come to maybe not a tragic end, but it'll slow down. And the re-evaluation of things from stocks and bonds to real estate, that's coming sooner than later. What they actually are worth is, is, is coming. And so to put all our faith in, in, in those things alone would be a mistake. At this point, we want to go ahead and invest in our well-being, which is in the form of our health, in, in our well-being, which is in the form of growing our minds and growing our skill sets, and, of course, within investing within our family and ourselves insofar as longevity is concerned by investing in precious metals. And in this case, just the plug, 7K Metals, you and I are members, and we're partners, and we're friends. And anyone who'd like to join our team, Don, what can they do? They can go to silverpreparedness.com, and there you're going to be able to see some fabulous information just to continue this discussion for you to understand a little bit better. And just know the perk of going to silverpreparedness.com, joining our 7K Metals team, is that you get A.G. Leverage, all his wonderful wisdom. He's going to be there for you every step of the way. I'll be there with you every step of the way, and we're going to soar together and meet you over the top. So until our next segment, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to our um, channel. Share this message with others. It's pertinent, timely information that all need to know. And thank you so much for being a loyal listener. Have a fabulous day, and until our next segment, keep thinking on your own. In the know with the bullioness.